Hello and welcome to Wall Street Training's Accounting and Financial Statement Integration Module. My name is Hamilton Lin and I will be walking you through this presentation. Please note that these materials are copyrighted and may not be disseminated or reproduced without the express written approval and consent Look of Wall Street what we call Training. the accrual concept of accounting. This governs U.S. GAAP and let's see now why understanding the financial statements and how they're integrated is so important. Accrual concept of accounting basically says that it has several things. It says revenue recognition as well as a very important term called the matching principle. Let's look at a very short, quick example of revenue recognition. Revenue recognition. What we're saying here is you want to only recognize the revenue when it is earned. In other words, your product or your service performed and delivered, performed and delivered, as well as collectible or collected. So what that means is, let's take a look at this. Let's pretend you're an insurance company. Geico, 15 minutes to kill, call Geico, you got 15 minutes, save 15%. Nope, they didn't pay us to say that. But in any case, let's think about this way. You have a six month policy with Geico. $100 a month for the six months, you have to pay $600. Let's say on the end of November, or let's say January, uh, December 1st, you, ins you start this policy and effectively, Geico has quote unquote earned $100 of your revenue of that premium. However, at the end of the year, December 31st, assuming they have a December 31st fiscal year end, at the end of that year, the other $500 has not been earned. So therefore, the concept of accounting says, even though Geico has already received all $600 from you up front, assuming you paid up front, the revenue recognition, accrual concept of accounting says you can only recognize $100 of that $600. The other $500 goes in what we'll call unearned or deferred revenue. That's a liability that shows up on the balance sheet. And the idea there is to say that, well, you haven't actually earned this revenue yet, and therefore you can't use it. You cannot say you've earned it even though you've collected it. On the cash flow statement, that will then appear as $600 of cash receipts. Similar concept applies for a basic magazine subscription. Let's say you prepay for a year or two years of subscriptions. That subscription company, that magazine, cannot recognize that revenue for each month that you pay until they've actually physically delivered that product and shipped it out to you. And so that is the basic idea of the accrual concept of accounting. To try to smoothen out your cash, to smoothen out your earnings, excuse me, smoothen out your revenue, smoothen out all of that so you do not get distortions because then you can manipulate when you receive your cash and when you don't receive your cash. So we're trying to get what we call a normalized run rate revenue number. The matching principle is on the flip side. The matching principle of accounting says matched expenses in the time period used to generate the revenue, again, in the same time period. So when you look at it from that perspective, let's assume that you get paid, uh, let's say your paycheck is uh, once every two weeks. So during the, first during the first week of service, you have not yet gotten paid yet. However, the company will have to recognize wages payable or some other form of liability and they will have to recognize that expense on their books to say that you have used, they have used your services and they owe it to you. As opposed to recognizing your entire uh, profit or rather entire expense, your compensation at the end of the two weeks. That all falls under the accrual concept of accounting, but matching principles specifically with expenses. Match expenses in the time period used to generate the revenue. Now, going back to our notes over here, what that means is, Let's write that down. The matching principle says, match expenses with the time period used to generate the revenues. This is another good example. For instance, property, plant, and equipment, P, P, and E. This goes back to how depreciation arises. For instance, let's say I spent a billion dollars and built a factory. This factory, I estimate, has a useful life of 20 years. I will, I will not be able to recognize all billion dollars in the year that I bought the factory. Why not? Because both GAP and actually also the governments, the tax attorneys also say, or the tax authorities also say, we will not allow you to deduct the full billion dollars as an expense in that year. Why not? Due to the matching principle. Matching principle of accounting once again says, you have to take this factory and you have to now depreciate it, the wear and tear on tangible assets, depreciate it over the life of the entire asset. So let's assume our billion dollar factory has a 20 year useful life. That will mean on a billion dollar purchase price or a billion dollar cost, that means I will now depreciate this factory $50 million a year for the 20 years. So what that means is I will depreciate this 
fifty million dollars a year, assuming straight line, straight line depreciation pro rata. And in the first year, you will have cash going down by a billion dollars, assuming you pay for all in cash. But you will not be able to expense. You will only be able to recognize your expense of $50 million a year. So in that particular first year, you spent a lot of cash, but you were not able to deduct it. In the future years, this will reverse, and you will be able to expense additional $50. And that's why depreciation is considered a non-cash expense. Again, depreciation is considered a non-cash expense for the very reason that you did not physically spend the dollars when you depreciated that in that particular year. So this is a good example of this because let's take a look at WorldCom. WorldCom, how did WorldCom go bankrupt? Good old WorldCom, right? What they did was they said, and again, this all goes back to accrual and matching principle of accounting. WorldCom hypothetically um, purchased, let's say, or they, they uh, invested in, uh, let's just say, $500 million of telecom towers or for the cell towers or whatever uh, infrastructure that they need. Let's say this $500 million, according to U.S. GAAP, should have been recognized immediately as an expense. In other words, recognized as expense immediately because this is not something that they will be able to write off over time. So recognize as expense immediately, ASAP. However, what WorldCom decided to do, and this is how you can start seeing how the manipulation of the financial statements comes into play. What WorldCom did was they said, well, you know what? Let's pretend, so let's pretend that this is going to have a 10-year useful life. So if I have a 10-year useful life, what that means is I will now depreciate and only recognize $50 million of this asset over time. Every year, $50 million. So in that first year, they have a quote-unquote savings of $450 million savings that they did not have to report in that first year. Effectively, they now ended up reporting less expenses, which means more profit. Well, how much did WorldCom do this? I think they did it, uh, don't quote me on this number, but somewhere in the tune of about $8 billion over a several year time period. $8 billion they did this, and that is why WorldCom was able to hide all of their expenses, or a fair amount of their expenses, because they were able to try to say, you know what, let's go ahead and let's pretend that this is going to be a multi-year period in which we will depreciate this asset. But again, folks, in what WorldCom did here, they were it, actually they were fraudulent, just outright fraudulent in the sense, or allegedly outright fraudulent, in the sense that they should have followed very specific rules on the treatment of the depreciation of these assets, but they didn't, and they got away with it for a good number of years because they said, according to accrual and matching principle, let's defer this over time. So now you can already start to see how the accounting and the U.S. gap is potentially flawed, or not necessarily that it's flawed, but that we need to go ahead and we need to make sure that we truly properly analyze and understand all these numbers so we don't end up in a WorldCom type situation.